All right, let's go ahead and program our Radio Master 168 receiver with our Radio Master TX16S transmitter. We're going to do this all in one shot with no cuts in the uh, video so you can see exactly what you need to do from beginning to end to go ahead and do this. So we have everything we need in front of us. We have our TX16S right here. We have the cable that we created either in a previous video or the beginning of this video. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to make one big video on this or split it up into different parts. And then we also have our uh, Radio Master R168 receiver. So let's go ahead and uh, power on the transmitter. I am radio. <laughs> Throttle active. All right, as you can see, we have the awesome startup audio. You can check um, my one of my videos uh, previously. It uh, talks about the startup audio that I created, and this startup audio you can actually download from the website, metalaviation.com. Head over there, go to uh, the shop, go to downloads, and get your free startup audio if you want that. And, hey, if you want, grab a T-shirt while you're there. Shameless plug for the website. So the, uh, the transmitter is all set up, ready to roll. Uh, let's go ahead and plug the... Uh, cable that we created into the receiver. Now this is where things are, uh, this is kind of important here. We want to make sure that we plug the end that is the regular standard um, wiring into the actual receiver. So as you can see, and we want to make sure we plug it into the, the S bus port, which is across the top. So what we want to do um, is plug it into the first three pins and we want to uh, match up what we see on top of the receiver. We have negative, positive, and signal. So negative positive signal so that's correct then in our JR port on our TX16S we want to make sure we plug this in correctly now this is the plug that we modified so what we want to do is we want to make sure that signal which is the white wire on this plug is at the bottom now if you use the different um, say you use the spectrum servo I think the the signal wire might be orange on there so you're going to have to verify that yourself before you plug it in. But I know um, on this particular setup right here, our signal is the white, white wire, and that needs to be on the bottom pin in our JR port. So we're going to plug that in. And we should see some lights on the receiver, which we do. So we've got a flashing red light on the receiver. So now that we're connected, we know we have power. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention is we want to make sure that uh, we are on a model. We have a model selected on the TX16S that is using the external bay. If you have a model selected that's using the, an internal um, radio, it's not going to power that back bay. So on this particular transmitter, um, the UMX Turbo Timber is using the external bay because in my external bay, I actually have a Spectrum um, uh, radio in there, even though this says... Uh, Ranger X, which is the 4-in-1. I'm just using this case to house the uh, Spectrum uh, radio I have in here. So that is the one model that I have set up on this uh, transmitter that does use the external bay, and that's the model I have selected. So that's why I'm getting power. If you're not getting power and you're doing this, uh, you're trying to program this uh, a receiver like this, that's probably because you don't have a model selected that's using the external bay. So just create a temporary one uh, for the time being that will allow that uh, JR bay to be powered. So now that we're all powered, we're going to go ahead and hold down the system button, and we're going to go over to the SD card. We're going to scroll down to, to firmware, click that. I'm going to go to R168, which in the previous video or the beginning of this video, not sure again how we're going to split that up. We created the 168 directory on our SD card, um, and then inside that we put the R168 version 2 FCC firmware, which is the one I want to use. So now that we have everything connected, we're on the correct firmware, we're going to go ahead and hit enter again, and it's going to default to flash external module, and that's what we're going to do. So it did the device reset, and now it's writing to the receiver. Now, I don't know if you noticed, when I fired up the transmitter, I had um, I was at about 50% power on the transmitter. That should be plenty to program the receiver, but I do suggest um, that you have your transmitter you know, fully powered up, complete full battery. Uh, you don't want this to crash halfway through because that'll pretty much render the receiver useless. Um, I know the type of battery I have in here, and I know that that, that 50% is plenty. So the one thing I do suggest is make sure that you have a full battery. So we'll go ahead and let this complete. It only takes about, I don't know, maybe a minute or so. 
And when it is complete, it'll basically, you know, say flashing complete or something to the that effect and have the option to return to the main screen, which we will see in a couple seconds here. Flash successful, enter. So we'll go ahead and hit enter. That'll take us back to the the firmware SD card screen, and we're just gonna exit out to that to the main screen, and our receiver is programmed. So I'm just going to unplug it from the receiver. Unplug my JR port. We'll set that off the side. We'll put our module back in. Oops. And uh we have a fully programmed receiver in our transmitter and we're ready to roll. And that's pretty much it.